Um, I can't deal with the lag. I couldn't deal with it. It was like a five minute lag. It, what's it like now? It was just like, um, if I'm going to, I mean, it's fine if I, I could just, if I could just turn the comments off, you know, and then, uh, then the lag wouldn't matter. Um, hi buddy. You tired? Do you want to just nap? Why do you got to look so, like, panicked sometimes? Um, all right, so, well, this seems better, but maybe we should go upstairs and do, uh, do some jazz and call it a day. Oh, you like the Yo-Yo Ma? Yeah, Yo-Yo Ma interview is up. That was great. Nice guy. Deep guy. Decent man. Like, it would, it would, it would actually signal the end of the world if it was found out that Yo-Yo Ma had done awful things. It would be the end of days. In a real sense. What? Everybody being casual? Comfortable? What's it like up there, bud? Nice? Okay. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to bother you. I'm going to sign a bunch of... Oh, I've got some artwork. Fuck, I don't know if I uploaded it. Someone on here, one of you guys did some drawings of Buster, some sort of uh, cartoony drawings of Buster and, and Sammy, but it got deleted in a sweep. So if you're out there, it's the chick with the, uh, I think she's smoking a pipe in her picture. Um, if you could send that again, might be helpful for some merch. Maybe. Got a bunch of these. In paperback that I'm going to sign uh, and put on the site. But Dima, the original, here comes the garbage man. Hello, garbage man. Hello, garbage man. Hey, what about my garbage? Hey. Mr. Garbage Man. She's here? Oh, yeah. Send, send it to me again. <laughs> because I don't know where they went. Um, you want an equipment breakdown of my stereo? Could do. So, I w let's do some... Let's do the garden... Like I found out like this, this area right here gets like a smidgen of sun like now. And then the rest gets blocked by everything. I don't think these guys are getting any sun. This guy gets sun in the morning and he's doing good. This thing just got some flowers. That's happening. And now that this thing is growing, I recognize this. This is going to go all over the place probably. It's starting to look good. It's starting to look good. You want to visit the cherub? My cherub? <laughs> I can't get rid of that thing. I don't know. This guy's got to find its way. I don't know if he's going to find his way. These things, I don't get think get much sun, I think, is the problem. And this thing is eating up all the sun. It's like a cancer. And that, that cactus, I took a, ch a slab, a chunk of the big paddle cactus from Sarah's place... But I think not on, I think she's, I don't know, it's like really kind of sad and gross and mutated. And I, I don't know, I'm not going to get mystical. 
Um, I love this stuff. Love it. And here's the fucking dinosaur. This thing, I don't know. Not doing much. I think that aloe is getting too much water. I don't know what this mess is. This is a fucking persistent rose bush from the last owner that uh, insists on being part of it. That's more aloe. But I don't know why it's... I think it's getting too much water. Is that why it's red like this? Oh, it feels all right. This thing's not doing much. It looks weird. This thing's all right. I've had these for like probably a decade. I've had this thing for probably 15 years. Same with this, like 15 years. I think this is sort of a weed. This thing's making me sad. Here's another dinosaur action. I planted one, one of these and look at this motherfucker. It's just gonna break this wall down. I know it is and I told my guy to fucking deal with it. This thing used to be at the top of my driveway at the old house. And I would say at least 70% of the guests who came to my old house to do interviews got poked by this fucker. Oh, look at that. That's going to happen. What does that look like? An iris? Looks like an iris to me. There's the guy. Do not know what to do with this guy. These rows, this, this stuff looks pretty healthy. But like I could pull all this shit out and right in this area, put a vegetable bed. I don't, I have to assume that she put this fucking cement in here. The woman who was here before me. Whoa, look at this thing's going. I've had this forever. I dragged this from my other house. You see these, these pots? These pots that are painted, like, you met Ernie. Um, oh, look at this. Wow, that's really going. Holy shit, look at this rosemary. I gotta fucking cook some shit. Um, so, yeah, the woman before me had a classical rose garden, right? And I took out these giant roses out front. Must have killed her. These two things are fucking lemon trees. I just want them, I want them out. Because I don't know what to do with them. There's nowhere to put them. They're stuck in these pots and they don't do anything. Anyways, the painted pots. Ernie who's been working for me on and off for probably almost 20 years. Um, had a girlfriend for a while that decided she was going to run his business and she was like going to organize his life and do invoices and receipts and, and, you know, and, and, and change prices. And like all of us who worked with her and you were like, dude, this is problematic. She's problematic. She, uh, she was a bit mentally ill. So she was doing all that. And then she just decided that she was going to start a business where she painted pots. Didn't make pots, but painted pots. So she would take these pots and like paint them turquoise color, orange color. And there's still a few around like that. And I, from the old house that I, I took over here for some reason, there's the, uh, there's the yellow. I can't remember her name. But she was a, a bit, I'm mean, challenging. I mean, she's, okay. I can be diplomatic, but she was mentally ill. So, so she, so Ernie would come do the work and then she'd be there with a fucking clipboard and, you know, all of a sudden just, you know, repotting your plants in these pots. And then she'd just slap that on the invoice. Like, this is for the, the work I did with Ernie. I'm like, I don't even like these pots, really. But there you were, you were stuck with them. You were stuck with like, uh, you know, a dozen, half dozen fucking painted pots in that weird sort of pastel -y turquoise or orange color. And uh, eventually it just became so overwhelming. She was kind of a frightening person. 
and Ernie's such a sweetheart, you know, and he's with a, a lovely lady now somehow, and it's good. But the first woman he was with, she had some issues. And then this woman was like way out there. But now he's got a nice place and they live together. Down, they, they, he did all right, man. It's weird when you have a relationship with some guy like that who's you've just known and see sort of learn his craft and also go through life. I mean, I don't talk to him t too much. You know, we, we don't get too deep, but yeah, that's the story on those those pots. Yes, it was non-consensual repotting. Yeah, Ernie's good. I'd like him to come take some of this shit away, but like he fucked his back up because he thinks he's Superman. And at least now he knows that um, he needs to bring people to help him. What's the hat? It's a Ship John hat. Did my brother move? I believe he did. Or maybe it's happening soon. I think it's like in a week or so, he's gonna be down there. I guess he's gonna be a neighbor or in neighborly proximity to the fucking, the, the monster Trump Jr. Um, How's my dad? He's okay, I think. I was thinking about going out to New Mexico just for a day. But it becomes tricky with the kitten. You know what I mean? I had this window of opportunity where I just had the one cat to go do some things because one cat's easy to take care of but for somebody else. Now there's two and one of them's a little fucking dum-dum. When I first started watching these, you used to spend so much time screaming and now you're calm. Well, too close. There's a reason, you know. I mean, I've been meditating. I've been moving through the process of grieving. I've been, uh, you know, I've got a kitten now. I've been, um, oh yeah. We've stopped the hemorrhaging. We've stopped the viral fire. We've stopped or hit pause on the end times because the country made a decent decision, just barely, to change management to see if we can get the shop up and running properly again. Yeah, I scream about bullshit. I scream about watches. Yeah, I got my shots. I think we've all had a hectic year. Um, but yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is, yeah, some guy recommended this other meditation thing where you do like full mouth, full throated, like heavy breathing, and then you do primal scream. Um, I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't understand what's going on in Canada. I, you know, and I don't really understand what's going on here. The sort of belligerence around treating this like it's a real thing is a very bizarro kind of world thing still. And again, like for me, it's like, okay, don't get your vaccine. Just shut up. And I guess, that, I guess it can work the other way too. I'm glad you got vaccinated. I'm proud of you. Uh, but you don't have to run around and, you know, treat it as a virtue signal. But it's like, all right, I, you know, if you want to get yourself or your family sick, fine. I don't think herd immunity is going to happen. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not Andy Piddle Goober. Andy Piddlegoober is just a breath thing, but I've been having a hard time walking into the breath thing with Andy Piddlegoober, and I'm finding out um, I'm going to make Irish brown bread next because now I'm in a thing. Primal Scream Therapy helped John Lennon so much with grief, etc. Yeah, I know. I, it also, I, you can hear it. 
at the end of the song Mother. <laughs> He's screaming for his mommy not to go, and she's gone. Um, what do you want to do? Is it is it better now? Throat singing is a thing, yes. Tuva. Bye. I do it sometimes. Um, yeah. Daddy, come home. I think that the recipe for the brown bread is very similar, except there's two types of flour and you use molasses and there's no raisins. I think that's the primary difference between the soda bread, which is all white flour and you use currants. I used raisins and no molasses. I use sugar, but I think the brown bread is a little bit different. Where's Brett Butler from? Georgia, I think. I wonder how she's doing. Soda rub is great. Yeah, I got the Irish butter too. Um, no raisins ever. And I disagree. I enjoy the raisins a great deal. So how about you just have your opinion and I'll have mine and you don't need to dump your raisin dogma on the rest of us. I'm glad that you don't enjoy raisins. How about framing it like that? Like, I personally don't like raisins in my Irish soda bread, as opposed to no raisins ever. I know I am the Gaelic wizard. This recipe has been in my family for 2000 years. We used to make Irish soda bread on rocks and no one was even making raisins back then. So you're wrong, Jew, you're wrong. Anytime you put raisins into Irish soda bread, you're like killing us again. You're weighing down the race. Irish people have been through enough. We can't have you, Jew, putting raisins into soda bread. It's not the way it's supposed to be. It's never been that way for centuries. You should have little shards of rock in your Irish soda bread from where they ground the fucking dried wheat into flour. That's how I like my soda bread. I sprinkle a little cement in it so it's authentic. Just say you don't like raisins in your soda bread. Don't be giving dictates, dictates, dictates. This is the word. This is how it should be. Sammy. I'm sorry. Are you awake? Dude. Stop eating little fucking pieces of wood. What is that? There's a million things to play with. Do you want to come up in the office? Huh? Hello. Hello, Sammy. Hello, Sam. Do you want to go play in the office, Sam? Do you want to sleep in your room, Sam? What do you want to do, Sam? What do you want to do, Sammy? You can't eat raisins. I think they're poison for cats. Oh, will I have Pam Adler on, I, Adlon on? Oh, will you go look at the website and see if I've had her on before you bring it up? Because you know what? I have. Oh, well, why don't you have her on again? Oh, because I don't really do that that often. Because it's not the type of interview I do. Oh. What the fuck is a tripod? This is going on too long. Never raisins. Never raisins. It's like the Irish version of never forget. Never raisins. 
I didn't make up that recipe. And to be honest with you, it was from a woman who said it was her grandma's recipe. Her grandma was what? Irish? What? Irish? What? And I got to be honest with you. When I had Irish soda bread, these are not Iranian carpets. These are Turkish carpets. All right. I think the upstairs one is a knockoff of a Persian carpet. But almost all of the carpets in here are Turkish, except for the one in the office. So, yes, okay, you're correct. It's a knockoff. Grandma was what? Irish. This is grandma's recipe with the raisins. And again, I don't know if I just said this. I forgot to use this. Escabiche. What a great word. Escabiche. Oh my God. Booster. Did I just see you? Did I make you up? Did I invent you in my head? Where's the fucking tripod? I guess we could play good records down here, but we're not. Oh no. I haven't had raisins in a long time. Escaviche. No jalapenos in the soda bread. Raisins. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? Hey, 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 come on. Come on, we're having a party in the office. Come on, Buster, come here. Let's go. Hi, Sammy. Look at Sammy. Look at Sammy. That'll get Buster up here. Watch this. Sammy. Hey, Sammy. Sammy. Where's Sammy? Oh, hello, Buster. Where's Sammy? Where is Sammy, actually? Sammy? Where is he? Sam? What are we doing? Sam? Where are you? Sammy? Sammy? Where the fuck is Sammy? Oh boy. Sharon Stone thought they were currants. Yeah, they're probably supposed to be currants. Uh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry, pal. I didn't mean this to happen. I was just trying to get Buster up here. There's a lot going on here. There's a shoelace involved and there's this fucking monster. Sam, did you, did you even register what just happened, Sammy? Come here, Sammy. You all right, bud? You all right? Huh? What? What? What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? I love you, man. Sammy, come here. Sam, come up here. Let's show. You can do it. Come on. Do the thing. Come on. Do the thing. Sammy, come on. I really don't even want... I don't want you to eat this either. Come on. Come up here. Come on. Let's go. No? All right. I don't give a fuck. No, 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 no. No, come on. Dude, please, 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 please. Stop it. Oh. Here, I got a bag of crinkly balls that were too expensive at this guy's place. It's a good place. Yeah. Right, keep it in here. Keep it in here. Keep it in here. Good job. So uh, let's do a... Uh,
This is what, this was my yoga album today. A little intense for yoga. That was a gift from Melody. I appreciate that. Thank you. I like the record. And it's blue. It's a blue record. You guys know how the jazz works. One through, let's see... I guess one through uh, five. Number one through five, and then a number from one to 20. The Moon in the Moon launch has plastic covers. The glass will shatter in the vacuum of space and potentially puncture the space through plastic will just crack. Yes, I know, Leonard. I, I know the whole story of the nerd plastic on the Moon launch, okay? But here's another thing that I know, Leonard is that that's all well and good. And I'm glad that the space boys had something to tell time with in space in their big machines as they orbit and something that safely wouldn't puncture their suit because you don't want to die because your watch broke. That's, there's an irony to that, isn't there? Or maybe that makes total sense. M my point is, is that I'm here on Earth doing shit with my hands. And I'm not just wearing the watch on the moon. I think maybe we should, uh, you know, get a Ouija board and get Neil Armstrong back and say, hey, Neil, like when you got back from the fucking moon and you were just out doing your life, you're you're like a astronaut. You do stuff like, you know, maybe ride motorcycles or snowmobiles or get out on the boat or perhaps, you know, you're you're building a shed out back or maybe you're doing some gardening, Neil. Let me just ask you uh, that watch you wore to the moon, the Hesselite. Like when you got home and started living your life like a person and not flying in outer space, did it get all scuffed up? Did it? Has anyone asked Neil that question? I don't think so. So Leonard, I know, and I'm not, I'm not attacking you because I know you're a regular here and, uh, and this is part of your life. I'm just saying I appreciate that information, but I think it's half-baked, okay? I'm glad the Hesolite had a function in space. What I'm saying is down here on fucking Earth, it's nothing but an aggravation because I just want to tell time. I don't want to have to look through a fucking life of scuffs on my fucking toy plastic crystal on my expensive watch just because Neil Armstrong wore it into space coincidentally. I missed all the numbers. I missed every one of the numbers. Leonard, that was in no way an attack. I think you know that. I don't know. I think I'm getting Sapphire. Is that the other option? I don't fucking know. I don't look at... What do I care? I don't look this shit up, man. I just want to... You know, it's like... It took me a long time just to realize, like, you know, I could fucking, you know, get pee on the Brian the Bootmaker's boots. 512. Oh. Okay. I can do this. Holy shit, man. I gotta pee. Dean says that's a capacitor. I would say this is probably free, Archie. All right, let's see how we're going to do this. We're having the tripod. I just had it. There you go. That's nice and comforting. Now here, 
here's the real question. Is all right. You uh you guys hang out and let's see how many of you leave with this comforting um this comforting music. I'll just leave this here for now and go pee and you can watch this idiot. Hi. Okay. That was great. Took us all to a place, and now we, uh, we're not in that place anymore. Let's calm it down. How'd Sammy do when I was away? That was fast? What do you want from me? I'm not that old. It still comes out, like, right away. And just comes out in a flow. I don't have to sit there and kind of wait and close my eyes and breathe yet. I'm not there yet. I can just pee like a regular man, not like an old man. All right, so that was fine. But what do you say we... Pick another one. What's up, Sam? Do I sit or stand? I stand. I just stood. I'll sit when I get up in the night, but just like then, I'll stand. And it felt good to stand. It felt powerful. What was it? Five twelve. We just did that, basically. Someone said D twenty four twelve. All right.
Come on, Sammy. I should have called him Mingus. Hey, buddy. Sammy. All right. Oh, that's a good record. What's up? So, I talked to uh, Tom Jones the other day and Steve Miller. I talked to Steve Miller. My fucking nose hair is really... Tired of old. Um, I talked to uh, I talked to Steve Miller and Tom Jones. Uh, and um, I uh, Tom Jones is great. Steve Miller is great. Steve, Steve Miller was great. And it's like, you know, no, why does anyone think about Steve Miller? It's like, those those songs are so deep in the brain, dude. And he'd been around forever. Like, he used to play with Muddy Waters and uh, Helen Wolf and James Cotton. Like, back in Chicago, he was there with the uh, same time Butterfield was there early. You know, doing the all-nighters with the... With the uh, um... Yeah, Tom Jones is, oh, he's 80, but man, is he fucking on the money, dude. And he looks better than he has in years. Why do you associate Las Vegas with Tom Jones? Because he was to Vegas for a while. Um, I gotta eat something. Sam. Sam, trying to figure out the... I, I'm trying to make this... Like this thing... 
only sounds great when you crank it. So I need a box or, or a master volume so I can crank it, but have an exterior volume control. Dino said he's gonna think about how to do that. Um, Tom Jones is funny, great to talk to. Uh, I just want to, uh, I got to figure, I, I'm, <clears throat> hey, what are you doing? Dude, come on, come here, Sam. Yeah. Yeah, but the volume knob on my guitar, um, if I crank that up and then I, I use the volume knob on my guitar, I don't think it'll, I don't think it'll work that way. got more toys. Hey. Dude, come here. The power soak evens it out. I don't know what that means. I just know that it would work if I had a master volume. Because it sounds so good. I don't want to crank it up right now because it'll fucking freak the cat out. But it's been this ongoing problem with these smaller amps is like how, like how to get the sound that they're known for without manufacturing some other sound with a pedal it would just require master volume. Tom was a phony, but I loved his voice. I don't know, man. He seems to have a, he seems to be a pretty straight shooter about his charm and swagger. And I did not, you know. We talked about Elvis a bit, which was great. Yeah, I think a volume pedal might be the ticket. But I thought I thought this would do it. Cuz I think this is a volume pedal, but it's this is fucking broken. And then I thought this would do it. But it didn't. And then this thing is just it creates a whole different sound. Stephen Miller knew everybody. Do you know what the interesting thing about um, about Steve Miller? Like while I was talking to him, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but who cares? While I was talking to him, I want a reactive load box. Who doesn't? Holy shit! A reactive load box. I think I have one. Is that the same as a Shuck Shack? Um, what was I just talking about? Oh, so that wire is not plugged into anything, is it? Maybe it is. All right, it's fucking idiot. Hey, hey, what about those? What about these? What about these? Huh? No, not my balls, these balls. Here. Um, I guess ultimately you don't want a reactive load. Oh, while I was talking to Steve Miller, 
I noticed that on the cover of Fly Like an Eagle, he's playing an upside down black Stratocaster, and he's a right handed dude. And I just noticed that. Have you noticed that? So I was like, dude, I just noticed that the cover of Fly Like an Eagle, you're playing an upside down left handed black Stratocaster. What's the story on that? And he said, well, he had already told me that, you know, he had met uh, Hendrix at Montrose or somewhere and they knew each other. But the story on the Black Strat was that, you know, he went into Manny's Music in New York and he was looking for a Strat. And I guess the guy said that Jimmy had ordered a left-handed, which is kind of odd because he usually played them upside down, the right-handed ones. But he had ordered a left-handed white one and a left-handed black one, but he was dead. And the guy asked Steve if he wanted them. And Steve said, yeah. And he said he still got the white one, uh, but the black one got stolen or something. So it wasn't really, it was kind of affectation, but it was also kind of an interesting backstory to that, that those were meant to be Jimmy's guitars. And Stevie got one. Like he wasn't doing that just to, uh, to affect something, though I'm sure he was to a degree because he said he, he had some guitars made that were configured like that. Yeah, but Jimmy never played him because Jimmy, you know, always played the upside down right-handed ones. That was part of the thing. So that's why I looked a little goofy with Steve. I'm like, why would you buy a left-handed Strat, which they make so few of, uh, to play it upside down like uh, like Jimmy? Well, it was actually supposed to be Jimmy's guitar. Captor X for my amp, power attenuator. Okay. Never heard of an upside down lefty guitar. I've seen it done a couple of times. I, I've seen, I think if I'm not mistaken, I saw Joe Perry do it too. It's pretty affected because it's like clearly like, all right, that's a Hendrix thing. So you just went out and dug up, you found a left-handed Strat so you could play it right-handed. Did Steve discuss the RRHOF? I didn't get into it with him. I actually forgot to. We talked like an hour and a half and I didn't like get into like why he was upset. I think the reason he was upset was that he felt a little disrespected because he couldn't have Elton John give him his prize and he didn't know the Black Keys and I think he just felt, uh, I don't know. get the breakup without the volume. All right, well, but does that, is that gonna cause it or is, is it gonna be the same breakup that I get with the amp? Like, hold on. I just don't wanna freak the cat out. All right, all right, I'm not gonna do it. Sorry. Post amp volume low, amp volume cranked. Yeah, that was, yes, that was, that was my idea. But these pedals that I, I didn't have, they, they didn't work. The black guy, the earthquaker black guy, but this thing, I had, I had high hopes for the speaker cranker. But the, my fucking, this thing's got to shorten it or something. Maybe I'll ask him to send me another one. Mark interview Mark Ribulet or Mark Rabot? Are you talking about Rabot? Who's Mark Ribulet? Um... What was your favorite Hendrix era? The one I listened to the most is the Band of Gypsies. Though I just listened to that Live at Winterland box set. I don't know what year that would have been. Because that was Mitch and Noel. Tom knew Mitch and Noel. 
Tom Jones. I'd interview Phoebe Bridgers, if, I mean, if she wanted to come on. All right. I know Rain Pryor. I, I don't think, yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, you guys. <sighs> Thanks for hanging out. I'll figure out this ham thing. Thanks for the suggestions. And and listen, ladies, go easy on the comment board, will you? I appreciate it, but seriously, I know we're all angry, but just, you know, don't hit send until you're like, sort of like, is this hurtful or is this reasonable? I'm trying to do that. All right, I'm trying. Okay, Buddha face. <laughs>